today we are going to learn transaction we have already discussed some of the introduction part regarding transaction but today we will learn what are the real life application of transaction with some mathematical operations so what is transaction so in the previous class i have explained that transaction is a set of logically related operation now first i will explain why transaction is known as logically related operation now take an example say you are transferring money from your account a to your friend's account b so now what are the set of operation that you can expect so the first operation will be reading that is you have to read your account balance reading your account balance means then the transaction will look like read a where a is your account so this is the first operation second operation is you are transferring money from your account to your friend's account means some amount will be deducted from your account so amount will be deducted so the next operation that you can expect will be from your account some money say rupees 10000 is deducted now after deduction then the transaction will write the remaining balance to your account that is you have to write a now after transferring money from your account to your friend's account the next operation will be reading the friend's account so reading your friend's account means you have to read b afterwards whatever amount you have transferred will be added to your friend's account the fifth operation will be b plus 10000 and then finally in your friend's account the updated amount will be written the sixth operation will be write b so this is the classical example of set of operations that is included in a particular transaction so for that reason what is the definition of a transaction we can consider a particular transaction say t as a set of logically related operations so whenever the definition of transaction is asked in your interview or anywhere else you have to provide one classical example and what are the set of operation involves in a particular transaction you have to mention them so now this is the definition of a transaction but now try to identify what is the problem here the main problem is whenever in the transaction is executing then it may happen the transaction may fail at certain point of time before it finishes consider a particular transaction is executing so this is your transaction t so this is your starting or you can say this is the beginning point of your transaction and this is the ending point your transaction throughout this region your transaction is executing so we can say that at the beginning of your transaction when your transaction started your database is in consistent state and also at the end of the transaction your database is in consistent state so what is the problem at any intermediate state your database may be in inconsistent state temporarily why your database will be in consistent state temporarily at any point of time during its execution because of some specific reason one of the reason may be power failure so due to power failure some inconsistency may arise at the time of execution of the transaction second point due to some 
system crash so these are the some specific reason that may create problem while your transaction is executing now as a solution what we can do at this point of time two operations are considered the first operation is known as commit operation so what is the meaning of commit operation commit operation means if all the operations in the transactions are completed successfully then whatever changes we have made all the operations will be stored permanently in the database this is your first operation now what is your second operation the second operation is known as rollback operation so what is the meaning of rollback if any of the operation fails means say at this point of time your transaction fails so rest of the operation will not appear due to some power failure system crash so rollback means from the point of failure your transaction will be rolled back to its previous state means the previous value of the account a say previously you have 20000 rupees in your account from which you are transferring 10000 to your friend's account so rollback means if power failure occurs at this point of time as a result your transaction will roll back to the previous amount the deducted amount or whatever update you have made on your account it will not be reflected so this is the meaning of rollback so since transaction is a set of operations and due to some problem your transaction may fail at any point of time so we have to rely on this two specific operations so that we could maintain some consistency in our transaction but this operations commit and rollback are not sufficient to avoid several issues that may arise during a particular transaction especially when you have two transactions or more than two transactions which are running concurrently concurrently means whenever we have two or more than two transactions executing in parallel means they are starting at the same point of time so at this point of time using this two operations only will not give you any solution so at that point of time we need asset properties so whenever we have a single transaction there is no need of considering the asset properties at that point of time commit and rollback operation will be enough however for more than one transaction executing concurrently means for parallel transactions we need to ensure asset property so that our database could maintain correctness now i will explain asset property with some relevant example introduction of the asset property i have already discussed but now i will discuss some example so that we can easily visualize what is the concept of individual components in asset property so we know that first component is known as atomicity so in the previous class i have described that by this property we mean that either the entire transaction will take place at once or does not happen at all that is transaction do not occur partially so there is no concept of partial execution of a transaction now what i mean to say by this property consider two account account a and account b the initial amount of your account a say 500 and initial amount in account b is say 200 so this is before transaction these are the amount that we have in account a and account b now say transaction t occurs so at this point of time let's consider that transaction t 
is containing two transfer operation T1 and T2. So what are this transfer operation? In T1, I am reading the value of account A and then I am deducting some amount from account A and I am updating account A. So after the transaction, the amount in account A will be 500 minus 100, that is 400. So this is the amount that we have in account A after transaction. Similarly, the T2 operation will read account B and then it will add whatever we have deducted from A in account B and then I am updating the account B. So as a result here after updation we will have the value as 300 in your account B. So now try to understand say if the transaction fails after completion of T1 and before completion of T2 at this point say your transaction fails and B account is not updated. However, immediately after updating write A operation, your transaction fails. This will result in an inconsistent database. Why? Because some amount will be deducted. However, since this amount is not updated before that your transaction fails so this amount will not be added in your account b so as a result 100 will be deducted from account a but it will not be added in account b so this 100 rupees will be lost in between while using transaction you have to understand that if you are updating some value whether you are adding some value or deleting some value from some account, you have to perform write operation on that account. Writing means you are storing the update finally. So what will happen? You are writing A means you are updating the value of A. So at this point of time, the current amount of A will be 400 because this updation will be reflected correctly. However, if your transaction fails at this point of time, this point of time or this point of time doesn't matter because the money will not be added in account B because write operation on B is not performed. So to see the updated amount in your account B, you have to write the value in account B immediately after adding it. Therefore, we must ensure the correctness in our database. So the first remedy is we will consider this whole transaction T as one unit. And then either it runs to the completion or it will not be executed at all. Means I can assure two operation over it. The first one is abort and the second operation is commit. So what I can do to ensure atomicity first, if the transaction fails, then we can abort the transaction. Means whatever changes I have made in a certain point of time, we have to abort that transaction means those updates will not be visible in the database. However, if my transaction means the whole unit T1 and T2 are completed successfully, then at this point of time I will perform commit operation means whatever changes I have made, all these changes will be visible to the database. So here you have to mark one point to ensure atomicity in a particular transaction T. We have to perform two operation abort and commit. That is either your transaction will be executed entirely or it will not execute it at all. So this is the first property that is known as atomicity. 
Now, whenever I am talking about atomicity, then the immediate next property will be consistency. Consistency means I have to maintain integrity constraint. So the question is, how could I maintain consistency in a database? Your answer is you have to maintain integrity constraint in the database. Now, what is the meaning of this integrity constraint? I am giving you one example. See, again, I have two account, account A and account B. The initial amount in account A is 500 rupees and initial amount is 400 rupees. Now, I am performing one transaction. So, after performing transaction T, then I am reading account A and I am adding some value to account A. And I am updating this account A. So, here what is the amount after transaction T? This is before transaction. Initial amount was 500 in account A. And after transaction, the amount will be 700. 500 plus 200. So, this is your first operation. Now, in account B, I am performing second operation. So, I am reading account B. And then, I am deducting some amount from this account B. So, whatever amount basically I have deducted, it is coming to say account A. And then I am updating account B. It is also possible. So, as a result, after transaction, the amount in account B will be 200. Because we have initially 400 rupees and I am deducting 200 rupees. Now, what is the meaning of integrity constraint? Integrity constraint means if your transaction is consistent before transaction, then after performing transaction, it should be consistent. Means, see, before transaction, what is the total amount? 500 plus 400. So, before transaction, the total amount was 500 plus 400, that is 900. And after transaction means I have made some changes in both the account and we have updated those amount in the respective account. So now check after transaction what is the total amount. If you find out after transaction the total amount will be 700 plus 200. It is also 900. So before transaction whatever amount was there after transaction also we have the same amount so it is known as integrity constraint that is total amount before and after transaction must be maintained and in order to maintain consistency in the database we have to maintain integrity constraints so this is all about consistency now we are going to learn the next property which is known as isolation this property ensures multiple transactions can occur concurrently without leading to inconsistency of the database that is this property ensures three points first Multiple transaction can occur concurrently without leading to the inconsistency in the database. Second, this property also ensures that transaction occurs independently without any interference. And third, this property also ensures changes occurring in a particular transaction will not be visible to any other transaction until that particular change in that transaction is written in the memory or it has been committed. So now let's consider account A and account B with initial amount of rupees 500. Now, in this case, consider two transaction T and T dash. In T, first 
reading on account A is performed, then updating account A by performing A into 100 and then whatever updation is made, it is written on account A. And then transaction T is reading account B and B account is updated by deducting 50 rupees from account B and then write operation is performed on account B. Now consider the transaction T dash. In this transaction, read operation is performed on account A and B and then the values of account A and account B will be added and this value is updated. Now consider a situation when T has been executed till read B and transaction T dash starts at this point of time. So as a result, transaction T reads the correct value of A as whatever updation is made by A is written correctly. However, T dash reads incorrect value of B as T dash started immediately after reading B. So whatever updation is made on account B, it is not written properly. So T dash transaction is reading incorrect value of account B. So at this point of time, the computed sum by T dash transaction will be A plus B is equal to 50,000 plus 500. 50,000 is the amount updated in account A, 500 into 100 and 500 is the initial amount of account B. The updation made on account B is not reflected here. So the computed value will be 50,000 and 500 which is an incorrect value. However, Transaction T will compute it as A plus B which is equal to 50,000 plus 450 which is 50,000 and 450. Now consider the two computed value. These two computed values are inconsistent in nature because we have loss of 50 units. So this results in database inconsistency due to loss of 50 units. Hence, transaction must take place in isolation and changes should be visible only after they have been made to the main memory. So this is the concept that you have to understand. However, there is no mathematical explanation for the property of durability. Because durability means it ensures that once the transaction has completed its execution, means reading and writing is done, then whatever updates and modifications are made during this transaction, it should be written in the disk so that they can persist even if system failure occurs. So durability is very simple property. If the transaction has occurred successfully, then whatever value you have got as a write operation, just store them in a permanent storage. So that if your system crashes, if your power failure occurs, then also you can recover the data from the disk. And as a result, there is no question of data loss because we have the durability property. So now whatever I have discussed so far, the first point you have to remember this asset property is applicable for concurrently executing transaction.